Thank you for listening to Remake Rewind, the podcast for each set of remakes or reboots should have happened. I'm Mike, as always, with me. I got my my good bud, Alex. Hey, What's man. Up, bud? Not too much. I'm wearing, I'm wearing your shirt, bro. I don't know. I know. I can see it. In the FaceTime. Yeah, this is good uh, podcast content. Yeah. <laughs> plugs early alex makes some great shirts he'll he'll talk about it later but uh yeah his shirts are good you should you should buy one thanks yeah i agree <laughs> very comfy very very soft like i've i've talked about his shirt several times on the podcast and he talks about them pretty much every episode at the end during his plugs but uh i i do have to say i didn't just buy this because i'm a friend of his like it actually is a quality product so i pride myself <laughs> on uh using high quality shirts and inks so that means a lot that you find it comfortable that is yeah, what I'm great. aiming for. I've I've worn it. I've had this shirt for several months, and the the letters haven't like faded or cracked or anything. Good shit. Good well, shit. Well, it's uh, it's called discharge ink, so it actually dyes the 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 fabric itself. The fiber. Yeah, so it's not. There's no ink to crack or anything. It's, it's not silk screened. Yeah, exactly. Well, it is silk Good. screened. It is silk screened, but it's not um like thick ink or paint that's going on top of the shirt. It's actually a um. It's essentially like a controlled bleach that removes nice. pigment from the shirt or dyes the fabric if it's covered. That's cool. So it's kind of like henna. Like my uh, cat, she hennas her hair, so it actually stains. So it'll never actually, if it fades, it fades red versus fading to blonde. Yeah. So pretty cool. Anyway, yeah. that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to <laughs> shamelessly plug your merch. This is a shirt podcast that's... now. Shirt cast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're here to talk about, uh, I think this will be, by the time this comes out, our last Halloween episode of the year. Well, uh, three well, Halloween episodes is pretty good. I'll do but, another uh, one. I think we, people will appreciate it. Let's see how the debate goes. Or the, uh, the we'll <laughs> we might we might need something uh, some escapism. Yeah, we might have to do the purge or something. <laughs> uh, but we decided to do something a little bit more topical, a little bit more relevant, something new, uh, which is something we haven't really been able to do. We did do Mulan right around the time it came out, but. Over the last few months, there were supposed to be several movies that we were going to cover that came out in theaters, but haven't been able to for the pandemic. And uh, Witches, uh, which is what we're covering today, uh, it was supposed to go out in theaters later this year, um, but they decided to drop it on HBO Max. So we decided to watch the, the 1990 cult classic, The Witches, and the, uh, the new Robert Zemeckis version that just dropped on HBO Max a few days ago. So, Hey, how good is HBO Max, by the way? HBO Max is fucking great. Yeah. We're not getting any money from them. No, we should be. I've talked about HBO Max on here, how I'm i not paying for HBO Max, but the CEO of HBO is totally cool. He has said he's totally cool with people sharing passwords. Hell yeah. And I didn't, I was unwilling to pay for the service. And then my friend who had HBO and would have gotten HBO Max for free, just dragged her feet upgrading her account. But when she finally did, and I saw all the content, like, Dude, it's fucking great. Like, if she canceled her service, I would start paying for it for sure. If I had, I I get like Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max, um, and probably something else that I'm forgetting. Amazon, probably Amazon. Yeah, for the boys, right? If I had to narrow it down to one or two things, HBO Max would be would be up there. Yeah, I sure. think so. Just between, well, obviously, all the HBO content is great, but. The, the DC stuff has been really good. I finally started watching. I guess maybe we'll just do what have, what have you been up to but early? Because <laughs> yeah. I've been watching. I finally finished uh, uh, Raised, uh, Raised by Wolves, and mm -hmm. I started Doom Patrol. I got, I'm two yeah. episodes into Doom Patrol. So yeah. um, I'm, so I'm not 100% on board yet, but I see the I think, potential. I think you will be. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it going. But yeah, yeah I'm really liking HBO Max. Other yeah, than man. that. And like Rick, it's what got I, all the Rick and Mortys, too. Does it have I mean, season four now? It's Adult Swim. I don't know if it has season four, but I it's... don't think it has season four yet. Well, still, it's you know, it's got first a... three seasons are good though. Yeah, it's got Rick and Morty, which is great, and it's just got all the Adult Swim stuff. So it's also got like Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Yep. I don't know, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, whatever. It has else. all it has all the yeah. all the, all the Cartoon Network shit. Adult Swim stuff. And no, it's it's fucking fantastic. Let's see. Since we're just banging out, <laughs> what have you been up to? Uh, Early, uh, I also watched. I can't remember what it's called, but David Attenborough just dropped a semi documentary on mm -hmm. on netflix and i think it's called like my life or my life on earth or something like that but the general premise is he's talking about climate change only based off his 93 years on earth mm -hmm. so throughout like he breaks it up into several decades and he talks about how the world changed during that time what he noticed on his like prolific career as a you know a nature documentarianism 
a nature doc <laughs> fuck i can't even talk a nature documentary maker um and just a guy who spends his time out in the wilderness for forever yeah. speaking of which 93 years old he looks like he's fucking late 60s early 70s he looks fucking fantastic good for you That's david awesome. attenborough yeah good for him and uh the only other thing i really watched I, i'm almost done with Shit's creek got through season four so i have two seasons left how are you feeling about and it and then uh season the finale of season three uh, it was where it, st it really clicked. I thought that was a fantastic episode, and I love season four. Awesome. Uh, I just finished season four today. So I yeah. um, started rewatching Mandalorian halfway through that. And then Katrina the new, wanted to watch a spooky movie. New Mandalorian is and, next month, right? This, this Friday. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So Katrina wanted to watch like a spooky film that what we hadn't seen before. So she picked that Winchester movie that had uh, Helen Mirren. Yeah. Fucking terrible. Yeah. No, no shit. <laughs> Garbage fucking movie. Don't watch it. I, I love, love you, Helen Mirren. You're a fucking treasure, but that was a garbage movie. We grew up near the Winchester Mystery House. I never had been there, and I lived Did, 20 minutes away from it for 25 years. You grew up in California, right? I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew okay, up in yeah. Morgan Hill, 20 minutes away from the Winchester Mystery House. Yeah. Never went. I went once when I was um, very young, you know, 10 or something, and it was pretty cool. I've, I've always wanted to go back. But I grew up in uh, San Mateo near the airport, so getting down to, I think it's like past San Jose, right? It's it's, it's kind of like Stevens Creek area. It's a little bit of a trek. Yeah, yeah. I cool. used to go to school like five minutes away. The community, the first community college I went to, was literally a five minute drive from there, and I still never went. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Like a lot of local New Yorkers had never seen the Statue of Liberty before. It's yeah. just like things that are local to you. I never saw Alcatraz either. Yeah. I went to Alcatraz when I was very young. I don't think I've ever walked across the Golden Gate. I know that's a thing. Nope. Never did that. Yeah. It's weird. It's just one of those things like uh, when you live somewhere, the tourist attractions, for whatever reason, just don't really matter to you, which is funny. Uh, yeah. Well, even you, though you've never seen them. You kind of take it for granted. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You're always like, oh, I'll get there eventually. And then you never do. It's like Han getting to Tokyo. You <laughs> say you're going to get there and then. Poor if you Han. do, you die. Hey, speaking of uh, Fast and Furious, tune into our Patreon episodes. <laughs> yeah, I can't do All the right. plug. <laughs> so, do do you want to do your "What have you been up to, Bud?" Or should we talk yeah. about the movies and then we'll still segue in the middle to break it up? No, I'll do it. Might as well. Let's yeah, let's change it. things do up. Do it, bro. Um, yeah. So, I, I've actually watched a lot since um, our last main episode, House of Wax, because we didn't talk. We didn't do "What have you been up to" for Fast and Furious. Your chair is so loud. <laughs> I know it's driving me crazy. Um. I watched all three of the Blade movies. I was surprised by your your uh, Blade Two sucks. score. I was really surprised by that. I haven't watched those movies since they it's since Blade Three came out. Yeah, but my, I was surprised because my friend your is, score was funny on Letterbox. My friend is a big um, GDT fan. Guillermo del Toro directed the second one. Yep, and I love him too. I'm a big yeah, fan. I think he's great. Uh, he actually that movie produced wasn't good. the. Uh, the movie that we watched, he he produced the 2020 version of uh, Witches. I think he wrote it. Along, he, with he worked the, on he was he worked on the story. Yes. Yeah, I mean he's he's one of three credited writers. Yeah, um, yeah, no, Blade Two. Like, I was really surprised that it wasn't good. Like, all the stuff that you love about GDT is in there: the production design, the monsters, and stuff. But I thought the editing was garbage. Uh, the action was like hard to follow um, and just not engaging. I didn't think the story was anything that interesting interesting and it just didn't feel as like pulpy and self-aware uh, as the first uh blade and then the third, I, I third wanna... one is like regarded as not being great but i thought it was well, just the... as good as the second one i remember thinking the third one was okay when i saw i worked at the movie theater when the third one came out mm -hmm. um and i th i remember thinking it was fine. fine i i was i'm a big ryan reynolds fan and even back then before he was like as I, big as he is now i think that movie is done a lot of favors by time because now we're used to ryan reynolds and it's like oh that makes yeah. sense i like this i think at the time yeah. it's kind of like who's this douchebag yeah why is I, van I wilder you, dog. Um, i i kind of want to go watch those i don't know what streaming service they're on but i saw all three pop i think they're on hulu um yeah i think so i don't think i so I, I saw this pop up and then you you had watched them i'm like maybe i'll fucking watch these it's it's worth watching just because it's interesting maybe you can uh watch them and then we'll talk about them yeah um but hey, i was surprised at how much i didn't like blade 2 um I was, it was a little bit of a bummer um that is a bummer i rewatched Moneyball, which is still fucking nice. fantastic i love that movie queen of the damned which is awful but fun to watch because it's that bad r.i.p Aaliyah. 
Yeah. Hubi Halloween, which was surprisingly heartfelt. Was it good? Fun. I've heard a lot yeah. of people, like, very mixed things about it. Like, a lot of people are like, why is this so popular? It's terrible. But then I've seen other people like, terrible. this is, like, the best Adam Sandler movie in decades. I'm not going to die on the hill of Hubie Halloween, but I had a lot of fun watching it. I think if you yeah, go in with low maybe, expectations, maybe you just want to have a good out. time, it's cool. We watched uh, You Don't Mess With the Zohan because we were on an oh, Adam that's Sandler kick. terrible. We, I, I wanted to see how well Borat held up because the new one was coming out, like, the next day. And... You know, I, start, I don't, you don't mess with the Zohan is not Borat, right? Well, if you let me finish telling the story, then you understand <laughs> what I'm trying to say. We started watching Borat and it, it was like late at night and it just felt very heavy immediately because yeah. it feels so relevant to right now. So yep. I was like, all right, well, part of this experiment is to see how well Borat held up. What else can we see that maybe doesn't hold up great? But I enjoyed Zohan at the time, you know? So we put that on, and yeah, it doesn't hold up. Rob Schneider's in is in Brownface, which I didn't realize. I didn't a remember. lot of those movies. So I, I worked at the movie theater. So a lot of those like comedies from that era, yeah. I watched like crazy. I went back recently in the last year or so and watched a lot of the Will Ferrell movies that came out during that time, like Talladega Nights. Um, I think Talladega oh, holds up. It does not. It's really? so homophobic. Like the first oh, okay. twenty minutes, you're just like. This is one of the most homophobic movies I've ever seen in my life. Whoops. It's very cringy. Right. Um, the Longest Yard, we actually covered on the podcast well before your your time. Yeah. Fucking garbage movie. And I love that movie when it came out. Yeah, I don't have any interest in revisiting yeah, that. Yeah, don't. Don't. Don't do it. Anyway, Zohan, yeah, it doesn't hold up. It's. I, I will say there's like a bunch of moments that I still find. There's moments in that movie that are funny. Um, I'm sure. That work. You know, it's got its moments. Dave Matthews as a white supremacist is funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the overall premise is like, he even says it too. He's like, well, you know, the Palestine Israeli um, conflict is very nuanced thing, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but you're still Adam Sandler talking about it. So like, you, just because you say it's, it, it requires a nuanced approach and it's complex or whatever, like doesn't mean that you can talk about it and not give a nuanced. Uh, uh, right evaluation anyway i agree yeah i feel you dog so then i, we, I did watch that borat movie too I yeah that i watched it i thought it was great i really enjoyed it It was yeah yeah me too yeah it was um again surprisingly heartfelt and uh you know the obviously the satire is like on point yeah no it's good um we should we can do a whole podcast talking about the giuliani scene oh my god we could oh my jesus um i watched <sighs> batman the killing joke the animated one from 2016 that was garbage um, yeah, I heard that was bad. And then I watched Ted Lasso on H on um, Apple Plus. I've Apple heard that's Google. great. Who's in that? Jason Sudeikis. Oh, okay. Sudeikis. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite TV shows that I've watched in a long time. It's oh, just good. like, it's really funny. It's not childish, but it's very wholesome. What's what's the premise of it? I, I've heard it's great, but I have no idea what it is. Jason Sudeikis plays this uh, uh, American football coach from the South who is recruited to um, to coach uh, an English soccer team, football team. Mm. And um, I can like, that's the, that's the, the gist of it. I don't want to give anything yeah. away. Cause I think yeah. there's, that's fair. That's fair. there's some stuff that in the first couple episodes that aren't spoilery, but I think you'll enjoy it more if you just, the less, you know, um, Sounds good. yeah, I really recommend that though. It was so much fun. And it's just like, I've said heartfelt three times in this, uh, uh, segment now but very heartfelt very wholesome um and like super funny without resulting to be to being mean or vulgar nice yeah just really well written comedy i either love jason sudeikis or hate him like everything he's in i either really really like it or i fucking can't stand it so i think he's really good in everything he's in i think he's generally good i just don't necessarily think his projects are good that's what i'm saying i think i think something yeah, if think there's something fair. if there's something that you don't like him in or that you don't like that he's in it's not because he's in it it's, it's not the, i think the, the only thing i didn't like him in was that i can't even remember what it's called um was that one it's him and Anne hathaway where they like inhabit the like the kaijus and i don't remember what that movie's called oh um, i like that movie um <laughs> I like the movie, but I didn't like, that's like probably the only thing that I didn't like Jason Sudeikis in, like his, his performance. For whatever reason, I just didn't isn't, like him in that. Isn't the name of that movie like somebody's name, like Monty or something? 
I don't think so. Let me look it up. Now it's going to bother me. Yeah. Son of a bitch. I hate we, being bothered. We can fast forward through this. <laughs> we sound like Man. we're aliens I trying to talk. Away. That I movie didn't. Les Mis? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. That movie like didn't blow my dick off, but I enjoyed it. It's called Colossal. Ah, uh, yeah. That's somebody's name. I think I dated a chick named Colossal. Isn't that an X-Men? <laughs> Colossus. I know. I, I was, I was Coloss- Colossal is uh, a girl that I dated who has the same afflic- affliction as Colossus. It's the f- the female um, equivalent of Colossus. Colossus. Ah, got it. In X-Men All language. Right. Should, we, should we get into the movies? Metal vagina joke. Yes. Speaking <laughs> of Anne Hathaway, what did we do this month, this week? We, 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 we teed it up, but I'll say it again. We, we watched The Witches, 1990 classic starring uh, Angelica Houston or Huston. Uh, and then we covered the 2020 Robert Zemeckis vehicle or directed film written by Guillermo del Toro starring Anne Hathaway. Nice. And uh, that one actually had a pretty star-studded cast, the, the 2020 remake. But uh, we'll talk about the remake in a little yeah. bit. Had you, have you seen either – obviously, you hadn't seen the new one before. But have you seen the original? No. And I talked to a couple people and it's like – and got the, you know, the pulse on Twitter. And it was like part of a lot of people's childhoods. And I was the right age. I was five years old. Um, Maybe a little young, but it's like this is one of these movies that I think endures for a few years and is part of people's childhoods around that time. And it's just like not on my radar at all. I've never seen it. Um, and even, you know, Jim Henson, like, I love that shit. Just yeah. Never, never saw it. I I know I had seen it, but I didn't remember it. Like the only part I remembered was the part when Angelica Houston like pulls her face off mm-hmm. and you see her as the grand high witch for the yeah. first time. Yeah. That's all I remembered. I didn't remember any of the stuff, like the whole premise of uh, like I knew kids were taking on witches, but I didn't realize they were doing it as mice. I completely forgot about that aspect of the film. It's really um, unique structure for both of these movies. It doesn't really fit into a a normal like three act structure box the way that you'd expect this this story. No, it doesn't, especially the original run. The original one. I, there's there's not really a flow to it, and there's certain things that don't really make sense. But on the whole, the movie has a charm. Yeah, maybe. You know, that's your opinion. <laughs> there's certain things, uh. and I I think it's because of the puppets. Like, I I'm a I'm a fool for puppets. Like, we went and watched um, a few months back. There was a pop up drive in, and we went and watched um, Labyrinth, hmm. which obviously is another Jim Henson yeah, film. Yeah. But I fucking love practical puppets like even when they don't oh, look yeah, for sure like even when you look at something like labyrinth where there are things that are they're very clearly not based in reality fantasy there's just something that works and with these these mice puppets i thought they were fucking great i thought they did a really really good job yeah as the, but that's what jim henson does and this was the last movie that jim henson did oh, i didn't know that. that he personally um oversaw to the point where uh, like Roald Dahl the author of the book that this is based off and he also obviously did Matilda Charlie and the Chocolate Factory so obviously a big part of a lot of people's childhoods he saw a cut of this movie before the release and was pissed and was like take my name off of it I don't want anything to do with this it's too gross it's too scary it's genuinely terrible and uh, Jim Henson actually like personally hand wrote him a letter to be like no this is what we did why we did it and Roald Dahl was like, oh, okay, cool. And like forgave Jim Henson and like, <laughs> I want to read that on there. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Um, well, should we talk about what the movie is about and then get into yeah. a record of a review? Let's do it. Do, do you want to do the elevator pitch for this one? Or you want me to do it? Uh, you can do it. And I think both the movies are pretty much the same. So yeah, just a little, little bit of difference on like the location and why the people are where they are. But Basically, in a nutshell, there's a world where witches exist, and there are certain clues that you can see on a woman to see if she's a witch. So um, they're always wearing gloves. They're always, they don't have, they're never going to be wearing pointed shoes, at least in the first movie. These are what they say. They're not going to have pointed shoes because they don't have toes. Uh, their eyes, if you look at them just right, will have a purple hint. They're all bald, so they're always going to be wearing a hat or a wig. And they're always going to be offering you some sort of sweet so they can poison you and turn you into some sort of creature. Because they hate children. Because they hate children. Children literally smell like dog shit to them. That's right. uh, So uh, in this movie, a little boy named Luke whose parents um, died in a 
yeah they die in a car accident well they they die i don't think they even say how oh no did we not we didn't know what they're they're, yeah yeah, that's right we didn't know we just know that his parents are dead and he's now living with his grandmother and they decide to go on a vacation and this vacation they end up at this really fancy hotel and there just happens to be a witch convention he gets turned into a mouse and as a mouse he needs to save the day and defeat the witches that's right yep yeah um, I did not enjoy this movie. I, I, I didn't either. And I, I said it I, has a charm, yeah, which I do think there is a charm, but I, I don't think it was a good so movie. So let me, I, I feel like I've, I've said nothing but negative things so far. So let me kind of, uh, balance that. Yeah. Um, do it, bud. all the Jim Henson stuff is fantastic. The, the witches and especially the grand high, Witch, you know, are super, um, detailed and like fascinating to look at and it's like cool i don't know i'm using all the adjectives that i don't want to use but i really like the design of the witches yeah um, that's fair i think the mice uh were super cool they're adorable they look like real mice like they're really well made yeah um little guys and i like i like the direction that they took the design too because they could have been like goofy you know um but no they're they're very realistic but uh but also like cute and charming so i dug that I think the grandmother, uh, May Zetterling, I think is her name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was good uh, for the most part. Angelica Huston is like fucking incredible, always. She was, but I, I remember her. This is not her best again. role, but she's great. Yeah, I remember, and I just watched um, Adam's Family for Ruin My Childhood. Hell yeah. And so watching her in that versus this, obviously, is Morticia Adams. She fucking kills it. This was before, uh, though, and you can see this like, was a year why they were like, oh, she would be great. Yeah, but I was expecting so much more because I remember her. She's the only part of this movie that I remembered, and I, I've seen her in GIFs, and I've seen her in memes, and all these things. And I just expected her to be this huge, larger-than-life, truly evil person, and I was kind of underwhelmed, honestly. But I think that's more of like I built up the character yeah. prior to watching the movie, but I, I wasn't very impressed with the character. I was um, underwhelmed by this whole thing. Uh, I think that's fair. What you said about Angelica, is it Huston or Houston? You said Huston. It threw me I've off. heard both. I've always said Houston, but I just realized it doesn't have an O in it. It doesn't. and so, But it's weird. So where I live in North Hollywood, literally a block down from me, there's Huston. It's H-U-S-T-O-N. And everybody I know, all of our neighbors, people in stores call it Huston. But we've been apartment hunting for a couple months now, and we're just like, waiting for the best apartment we're not just going to settle and then the other day we saw an apartment that was on huston and the real estate person kept saying it was called it was houston and we're like we were super confused and then i went and saw another apartment but she could like this unless the street is named after her she could choose to have it go either way right i'm gonna Um, say houston because that's what i've always heard yeah i've always heard huston which is funny you say huston i'll say houston that's fine we'll cover our bait we'll hedge our bets exactly one of us is right (laughs) um so it's actually huston (laughs) <laughs> yeah we're both wrong um it's actually smith it's just pronou- it's spelled really weird yeah man this was like underwhelming uh i think a lot of people just and totally valid i think a lot of people just have nostalgic ties to it i i felt i didn't feel like i was being taken along for a ride i just felt like there's a bunch of things happening on the screen in front of me you know like it was just a collection of scenes um, I didn't feel a flow I, I to the movie feel that way too. I, yeah, did, I, I said that earlier that there, yeah. there was a charm, but there was no real flow and, to how the movie progressed. Right. And we'll like, we'll come back to a lot of these things in the, in the next one, but that was a big difference that I felt with the new one. I um, agree. Yeah. Well, and just to kind of go on your, your thing of like, people clearly just have a nostalgia factor for this, this movie. Yeah. Which and is I totally fine. Way, yeah. When I went and watched labyrinth, which I didn't grow up on Labyrinth. I, I saw it as a kid, but I was like maybe 10 or 11 the first time I saw it. Mm-hmm. And then I watched it again sometime in the last 10 years. And then I went and saw it in the drive-in. And the time I watched it a few years back, I was like, eh, I don't understand why people are obsessed with this movie. And people are obsessed with Labyrinth and the Goblin King and everything. Yeah. And then watching it at the drive-in, this was during the pandemic, I liked it a lot more. But I think that was more about the experience of watching something on the big screen again during the pandemic. Yeah. But I think it has a lot of the same problems as as this movie does in that it, there's a lot of little like set pieces and a lot of cool visual things. But the movie itself, there it it just kind of jumps around and gets to like, it's like, well, here's a, here's Z. I need to get to Z. And it kind of just hop skips around and never really has a, a guided path to the end. I think. Yeah. And just, you know, to again, balance my previous opinion, 
I think that's a style of filmmaking that was more popular at that time where it's more about just having an experience and you can get up and go to the bathroom and you're not really going to lose any part of the story and you're just there to take in all of this shit including yeah including like david fucking bowie and all these amazing puppets and practical effects and stuff and it's less of a focus on the story and less of a focus on keeping you glued to your seat for yeah absolutely for two hours and that's like a totally different style of filmmaking that is uh, great in its own right. And you can appreciate things about that, but also that's not really the way movies, uh, that's not the way mainstream movies are made now, you know, no, and that's for, sure. for, for better or for worse. You watch a Disney or Pixar or Marvel movie now, and it's about packing as much story into every moment. And, um, yeah. And, you know, keeping you sat there and following the thread of the movie and trying to, like, use, uh, I'm sure there's articles written about this theme in everything. You know? Theme and then also looking for the Easter eggs. Like, they're always putting all these little things that <laughs> yeah. aren't relevant to the story, uh, but are there for, like, the diehard people. So, yeah, yeah you, you have to look at it and you have to go see this movie multiple times to see every little thing that you missed. Uh, yeah. So, I think if you're you not, to, I think no, for something, I think for something like this, if you're not charmed by it as a kid, it's harder to be charmed by it as an adult unless you're in exactly totally the right headspace. I think that's totally fair. Yeah. And I don't even know how I want to go through this. I don't, because neither of us were truly engaged. I don't want to hit every plot point and go through it. Yeah. Cause there, there's certain things that didn't make sense to me. So I, I, I think maybe we just hit some of the, like the highlights, like the big things that pushed the, the, the story forward significantly, I think is the, maybe the way to go. Cause like, yeah, the, yeah, the I'm, movie. Kind of, I'm looking at my notes and trying to think of like what's relevant and how to, how to best get through them. I can, yeah, yeah. Let's like let's not go uh, point by. Let's, you want to do it? Oh my god, I'm like stuttering so much. Uh, do you want to do it by act? I guess so. Like, I guess we can try to do it as an I can act. So maybe act one is the explanation of witches, and then them getting to the hotel, and then and his parent, his parents dying. Yeah, and then like his. Uh, I guess act two would start when he's transformed. I think that's middle of the movie. I'd have to like go back and check. Yeah, it's no, it's pretty far in like this movie. Yeah, I think that's the midpoint. It's like a good 45 minutes to an hour before he transforms. It's it's pretty far in. Yeah, that's because how, we have that's, that's kind of what we were talking about. Like it isn't this isn't like a traditional. It's almost more like a five act. Um, yeah, structure. that's fair. Yeah. yeah. So it, it feels uh, unfamiliar and it's more of just like an experience. Yeah, because like basically we get of scenes or set pieces. We get um, the boy Luke, which in the novel and in the second movie, the protagonist doesn't have a name. They're just right hero boy in the second movie. Hero boy, but he's like going to bed, and his grandmother tells him about witches and everything. And that was like a terrifying conversation. And yeah, she was about to put crazy. him to bed, and she's like, "Listen, yeah. these motherfuckers are out there, and they will eat you." Or well, something. and the the parents come in and like, "Why the fuck are you telling our child?" This yeah. fucking story right before he goes to bed. Yeah. And she's anyway, like, whatever. Go fucking die. We've had a few drinks. We're going to go drive on a, on a rain slicked street. So, yeah, the parents die. Somehow. And, like, immediately after, like, the next scene is, like, the kid is, like, out in a treehouse and just, like, no girls allowed. That <laughs> That's not true. There's there's There are, like, no girl children in this movie. The only women are the it, grandmother and the witches. It feels like it's, uh, like you said, I felt like it was going to be, like, a kids versus witches movie. And then there's only two kids in it. And one of them was useless. Yeah. So we our first experience with the witches, he's in, like, a treehouse. And this witch inexplicably shows up and just like hey i'll give you a snake if you like come down here and he just starts screaming he's like grandma <laughs> and like the grandma like fucking takes her sweet ass time coming she doesn't even oh, hear him. she just happens to she happens to come up like hey dumbass it's dinner come in <laughs> and he's like oh that's what we could talk about by the way this kid is a dumbass uh they're they're hedging they're hedging their bets uh on this fucking kid being engaging and charismatic or whatever like he's the star of the movie essentially and he's a terrible little actor and he's so annoying yeah i hate that kid there's multiple no, he moments, wasn't fun multiple mom- moments where i wrote down in my notes like i just hate this kid i say i didn't feel that strongly but i do agree that he wasn't charismatic enough to hold the movie especially when you get rid of him and it's just the voice yeah because about that was half better. of the movie at least that was a, a mouse a cute it's- little mouse yeah, that's that's a little bit more engaging, but like his delivery. And yeah. granted, he's just a little kid, so I don't want to like beat up on a little sure. kid. But it wasn't very good. So 
he tells his grandma, hey, I saw this witch. And she's like, well, let's get the fuck out of Dodge. We're going to go to a hotel by the ocean. And he immediately, like, he has his pet mice. And, like, Who Mr. Tortures. Bean, Mr. Bean is the hotel Rowan uh, Atkinson. Manager. Yeah. Mr. Bean. Yeah, I love nah, Mr. Bean. it's Rowan Atkinson. He has, he's, I, I like Rowan Atkinson a lot. Anytime he's in something, I, like, I'm like, oh, this is, might be, this might be decent. He was good but, yeah, in Rowan, this. What was that? He was good in it. He was totally fine in this movie. I actually really liked his relationship with uh, the the maid, which you don't really realize anything's going on between them I, until it's very overtly yeah, yeah. something's going on. It's a little I, weird. I noticed that early on, but I, I had a hunch, and I was like, I wonder if they're fucking. And then they confirmed. And I was like, ah, yeah, I called that shit. I had no idea <laughs> until like he was just like, so basically there's this maid who keeps happening to stumble upon the children's uh, the children as mice. She's always there when mice are around, so she's like frantic. And then at the end of the movie, the climax of the movie is they poison like a soup to get all the witches, and somehow she got a little bit of it, I guess. She like picked it up and thought it was perfume, so she dabbed it behind her ears. Yeah, that's what it was. So she, she ended up getting like the potion on her, so she had like a little hairy patch. And Rowan Atkinson was like, <laughs> like a, he went to give her like a, little a fucking kiss, boss, and then he's like. He just like yeah. turns up his nose and walks away and she's like, well, that was weird. And then goes and looks at the yeah, mirror and she's, she's like, like, I've got like a hairy mole fuck. Yeah. She's like, well, my shift's over. And he's like, yeah, well, I've got to fucking look in on this like <laughs> convention, but I'll, I'll, I'll find you later. And he goes to like inappropriately kiss her on the work floor. And then he like pulls her hair back. He's going to like kiss her neck. It is consensual. That's fair. But he goes to kiss her neck and he sees the hair and he's just like, fuck this yeah. <laughs> and leaves. It's pretty fucked up. <laughs> But uh, I guess I think what's really weird is getting back to like moving through the plot. Immediately they see the pet mice and Rowan Atkins is like, they need to stay in the in the hotel room. Immediately the kid's like, I'm going to take the mice out of the hotel room and go into like the banquet hall where I and know I'm not lose. supposed to be and let them play around. He meets a little fat kid named Bruno and Bruno's like, yeah, some woman's going to give me six things of candy. Gunther. He looks like a Gunther to me. <laughs> like Gunther. But his name is uh, Bruno. And he... Bruno. So while he's in there, like, playing... He's in the banquet hall doing his little, like, tricks. Like, his little mouth circus. Like, he's always uh, talking about having dude, does this training, kid right? to grow? Does this kid grow up to be the guy in uh, Green Mile? <laughs> yeah. <I think> so. <laughs> <laughs> he's torturing uh, these poor little rats. That would make... Yeah. By the way, they're, they're so rats he, in this movie, right? In the in this next one, they're mice. I think in this one, they're actually rats. No, they're supposed to be mice, and the witches turn into the even the witches oh, okay. turn into mice. The other one, it's like it's a mouse if you're a good person, and a rat if you're a bad person. Oh, that's unfair. To is rats. what it seems like because the kids were definitely mice. Okay, but the witches turned into like these weird, grotesque yeah, yeah. rats, and the other one. So he sees the banquet hall. We see this incredible scene with the, the witches taking off their wigs and pulling off their gloves and pulling off their shoes and seeing these just grotesque creatures. And he's just like hanging out under the stage, just creeping. And then Bruno comes in like, where the fuck is my candy? Where the fuck is my candy, you witches? Yeah, and then he like turns into, shit. yeah, he turns into the mouse. And it's truly fucking terrifying. <laughs> like that scene was like really disturbing. I can see why Roald Dahl was like, what the fuck did you guys do with my store, <laughs> my kid's book? Like that's terrifying. Like this is some body horror. Like this could be a Cronenberg. <laughs> like Cronenberg could have like directed that scene. Oh, yeah. It's fucking gnarly. <laughs> Um, but then like the kid immediately gets caught, turns into, they turn him into a, or no, he escapes like inexplicably. He just like squirms through all the witches. He gets out and he's like running around on the beach and he's like hiding under these rocks and inexplicably like Angelica Huston like sees a baby in a stroller and just like pushes it down a hill. Yeah. Like it's heading off a cliff and then the kid like, runs and like saves the, the baby. Yeah. It's literally the saves same thing. the baby. And you'd think at that point he would get caught, but no, he like runs back into the hotel room and then like gets caught there. So these witches have like all kinds of magic and shit. Why don't, but they never use it. Yeah. First of all, why do they need to turn kids into rats to kill them? But you know, they, they want to torture them, whatever. I'll let that slide. But then they're like chasing down this kid who knows their secret and is a threat to their existence. And they're not using any of their powers to like, they can't, right. there's okay, 50 so women in the room. And they can't just grab him. Well, and the thing that to make that even worse is so there's a point when they're going over the plan and he overhears the plan. They're like, OK, what you guys are going to do, you're going to go open up a candy shop and you're going to sell the world's fucking best candy at the candy shop. 
and you're going to make sure that anytime a kid buys a candy that it's one that's laced with this potion and it's like there's this like conceit that one drop of the potion will give you like you'll transform in five hours two drops will get you transformed in half an hour there's and then five th three drops instant there's 500 doses in this tiny little vial that's like three inches tall it's like a size of a nail polish kind of thing <laughs> yeah, there are 500 doses in there right so while she's explaining this like the plan so one witch like raises her hand and like hey grand witch like i think it's great that you want to kill all the kids in um uh, in england but how are we gonna do this like before their plans revealed and then like she like finger blasts this woman like, i think it's from, her, she, like, think it's from her eyes purple lightning <laughs> was that from her eyes was it through her eye? No, it was through her hand, I thought. I think it's from her eyes. She, she points. Has purple... No, I, I, there's a reason why I called it finger blasting right. in my notes. That's funny. Finger blasting. Well done. So she finger blasts <laughs> another witch <laughs> to death. Yeah, that part was but, cool. She I just like shoots like She shoots like purple lightning from her hand and like you... blows up this witch. Nobody can see you, but you were literally holding your fingers just <laughs> as if you were yeah, I was holding up two fingers. romantically insert them inside of a... <laughs> female partner <laughs> and going in an upward motion <laughs> but yeah she like finger blasts this woman she's destroyed so there you go like she they literally have at least maybe the maybe it's only the grand high witch that has this power it's like just like right. use Emperor that Palpatine. this is the time to use it she could have she could have finger blasted this kid <laughs> god damn it <laughs> let me just since you said it that way let me jump ahead for a second this kid's fully naked at the end and i did not appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> that was a little weird. It's not even like, He's like flying through the air naked. Yeah. Do you remember um, you've seen Superman one with Christopher Reeves in 78? Yeah, yeah. And like that little three, like little baby. Yeah. And he's like, you know, uh, I think he's three, two or three or something. And like, that's whatever, it, you know, not, not something that uh, we do in movies anymore. But I think at that time that wasn't really a big deal. But I mean, back then, back in the day, you could do that on TV. Like uh, yeah, yeah. little house on the prairie had like yeah. naked kids. And in that's like, all the goddamn time. They hadn't sexualized children. Like we have. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was that's wholesome. Fine. It's like, Oh, that, it's a kid taking a bath. That's very young at 10 years old. I don't want to see any naked kids. Yeah, that's, that's too I, I agree. There's, there's, there's a, it's like three and under. You're like, Oh, it's just a, it's, it's a, literally it's a, baby. a baby. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, I agree. That was with a you. weird you, thing at the end of this movie that I did not appreciate. <laughs> anyway, so, back to finger blasting. Back to yeah. So the the witch gets finger blasted to death, <laughs> dead. <laughs> um, and so they chase the kid. Angelica Huston, Houston, fuck your Huston. I'm Houston. Pushes the baby carriage down the thing. They do a little battleship Potemkin routine. They catch the baby. Uh, Luke gets away. Right. Which not, is like, what was the point of that? Yeah, then because it was to have a fun romp where she she was she supposed we to just, show how she evil just like, she is because she po po yeah. yeah I was gonna say maybe it's just like oh I have an opportunity to kill another child while looking for this one I'm just gonna kill this yeah. child and call it a day. This is that experiential thing that we were talking about though. It's just like oh yeah. this kind of builds the story and also it's fun but also if you want to go get a drink you can do that get some popcorn. Yeah. Um, how does he end up getting turned into a mouse again? She like catches him like later on like. In the room, in one of the rooms, or something like that. Like it's back in the hotel. Yeah. Like I, I don't know if he ran down. back into. Yeah, so they force it down his throat. They give it to him. He turns into the mouse again. He runs. And Bruno is like already back mouse by this point. Yeah, so he ends up like squeezing through this vent, and he sees Bruno, and he sees a couple. Of, he sees his pet mice, and they're like, "We can talk." And Bruno's like. What do you mean I'm a mouse? And the kid's like, dude, you're a fucking mouse, dude. And he goes, he, just because you're a mouse doesn't mean I'm a mouse. When he it's says like, that shit, how the fuck he's you? underneath the building. Like, he's in the, um, what do you call, like, the... They're in, like, the crawl space. Yeah, it's not the rafters because it's lower down. But he's in between yeah. the floorboards and shit. And he's eating, like, a perfectly preserved cake down there somehow. And, yeah, he doesn't realize he's a rat. Like, bro, your entire world just changed. Yeah. Like, it's stupid. So... He they end up going on the and this is really cool. Like all the stuff with the puppets are cool. Like they go on this like really <laughs> long. Dude, one of my notes is um, that the the little the rat version of the little kid is super cute. And I was like, did they cast? Did they uh, make the rat before they cast the kid? It's like uh, Jack Frost when they did uh, the Snowman, and it was based off George uh, George Clooney. And then he didn't want the role, so then they got Michael Keaton. <laughs> so the Snowman's supposed to look like George Clooney. That's but... awesome. Not my favorite Jack Frost, by the way. For anybody, for anybody that's not in the know, there's a horror movie, Jack Frost, where a snowman is a, basically a slasher, and it's awesome. You should watch it. Yeah. You get this really great scene where they're like, they have to traverse literally the entire like hotel, and they want to get to Luke's room so they can tell the grandma. 
And somehow they just were like, oh, if we get to the, my room, like my grandma will be able to fix the thing. Not knowing if they can understand if they're actually speaking English or they go, they go up to their hotel room. They get up there after like going through the elevator and hiding in a food bag and almost getting killed hijinks. by Second act the maid. And then immediately the grandma like, was like sees the mouse and she's like, Luke. And he's like, yeah, grandma, I'm a fucking mouse. <laughs> And he's like, it's totally cool. I actually she really like, like it. I don't have to go to school. I don't have to like learn to drive, like all these things. It's like, and then immediately she's like, well, what are we going to do about this? He's like, we need to fuck up these witches. <laughs> and so like it, more hijinks, like they go down, like she lowers him in like knitting to go break into the witch, the grand high witches. A little knitted sock that's connected to her. Yeah. Room to get the, yeah. uh, the potion. There's a whole thing where like the witch sees it. And the grandma plays it off like, oh, yeah, I just dropped my knitting. And the witch is like, oh, okay, fine. But, like, they recognized each other. Because, oh, there's a point where when we're learning about the witches at the beginning, the grandmother's like, oh, I had a friend who got turned into an, an um, a mouse by a witch Didn't she back get in the stuck? Day. No, she got stuck in the painting. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and this one, they, oh, yeah, that's right. There's a painting. Yeah. And then she talks about how the painting... Like the girl would just show up every day in a different place in the painting. Nobody then, notices like, that this painting kept... is changing every day, and it looks exactly like. No, they did daughter. notice it. No, they did notice oh. it. The, they mentioned the parents noticed it. But they were like they couldn't do anything, and then eventually, like the little girl trapped in the painting got old and then died, and then never was in the painting. It's pretty again. fucked up. It's super fucked it's up. Cool. It's super dark. Yeah, I like it. Um, so eventually, what ends up happening is they get a little vial of the potion. They go into the kitchen, and this is where I'm like, this is kind of fucked up. Like, the grandmother, Bruno, and Luke don't give a shit about bystanders on this. Collateral they go damage. Into the thing of the, yeah, they're, they're man of steel. Like, yeah, they just dump the entire potion in the soup. Now, granted, we're told that this particular soup is meant just for the witches. Yeah, no garlic. But, like, right as he pours it in, he sees, like, the person who's cooking the soup go and say, like, Hey, the soup's almost done, and like the she and like tastes it, and then a chef comes over and tastes it, and he's like, "Oh, it's a little salty. No more salt." And then the wi like the chef throws in more salt just to like spite the chef. Yeah. Well, I think she's a witch, and she is a witch. Yeah. Um, but she throws more. So she's like, "Fuck you, chef!" And like throws more <laughs> salt in. But like this kid just saw a man taste it, so he knows like people potentially could be eating this that are not. Which is yeah, he's just so focused on revenge that he uh, doesn't take into account innocent bystanders. Yeah, so what other lives might get hurt? From this point, like what's weird is we talked about this weird story arc and like pacing because it's it's seriously like twenty minutes telling us about the origin of witches and what they can do and the story of the friend, and then it's a good like ten minutes of this kid interacting with the witch in the treehouse and then realizing they need to go to the hotel. It feels like the filmmakers then, were like, yeah, people are going to be filtering into the theater for the first like 30 minutes. So we'll just you know, yeah. keep it light on story. So they end up once he turns into the mouse, like it's, it's like snap, 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 super quick gets to the end. And then we just like they just blow the load with like the scene where like all the witches turn into rats at the same time. And you're seeing like them like farting through the air and flying through the air and turning into rats in midair. And people are killing the witches. Our, our hero mouse gets his tails partially chopped off and it's totally fine. Um but yeah, all the witches ultimately get killed mm -hmm. or turned into mice. Right. Rats. And then we fast forward to him back at his grandma's house. And he's got this like pretty cool like setup of like Hot Wheels ramps and remote control airplanes and shit that he's like flying around like uh, Stuart Little. Yeah. And he's Which the grandmother he's stuck, built, by the way. This, this diabetic yeah, nine-year-old woman. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She has fucking diabetes. Yeah. I wrote that down. She has like a diabetic coma several times in this movie. Yeah, it doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's just sad. It's weird. It's just sad that this kid who's an orphan now is stuck with his 90-year-old grandma who also might die in the next couple of years. Yeah. Because she likes so the sweets. So at the end, there's one point. I feel like this is just a throwaway so they can have a happy ending. Because in the book, the kid is trapped as a mouse for the rest of his life. Right. And he never becomes human. In this so movie, in this, there's one part. Angelica Houston has a secretary that she mistreats. And at the end of the movie, the secretary is kind of like, I'm actually a good witch. And she just randomly shows up at the uh, grandmother's house and just blast finger blasts some light through the door, <laughs> through the window. <laughs> and the kid becomes this, uh, becomes himself again. And he's naked. And they go over to the door and, or the window and they're like, thanks, good witch. Remember to fix my friend Bruno. And she's like, nah, fuck that kid. And then she drives off. 
I'm really mad because I'm looking at my notes. Could you please finger boss me some clothes too? No. Yeah. <laughs> Here are your glasses. Yeah. yeah, he has his um, glasses, but not clothes. Yeah, she well, she finger blasts the glasses to him too. Finger black the, finger blast that kid some slacks. Yeah, so it, I'm really mad. I'm just gonna say this now. I meant to call Bruno Leroy the entire night because his name is Bruno Jenkins, and he just I, like I runs into. I said that. Again, I'm so mad that I didn't call him Leroy, Leroy this Jenkins. whole time. Yeah, because yeah. he just runs into problems without thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. The only other like notes I have are just like trivia stuff. Um, I got a couple. The, I got a couple bigger things we can talk about before that. Oh yeah, go for it, bud. Um, well, uh, let me get through a couple small ones really quick. Uh, the grandma just accepts a strange trunk at the end, which I guess is like a pre nine eleven pre anthrax thing. But oh she no, just the kid he mentions in. that he arranged it. Yeah, but she she has it in the but, house before he says that. Yeah, but how the fuck did he? He arranged that mouse. as a mouse. He's a mouse. Yeah. Um, they also Even talk. a mouse with the intelligence of a 10-year-old boy can't arrange for. <laughs> so this chest was full of like the equivalent of like a couple million dollars because it's supposed to be enough for 50 witches to like buy and stock right. fully operational candy shops. This was in Angelica Houston's. Huston. God, God damn it. I use yours. <laughs> uh, Angelica Huston's um, hotel room. So legally it was hers yeah. and as far as we know like she's either missing like from in the legal system no one's gonna be like oh yeah she became a rat so anybody can just claim this chest full of money neither a 10 year old boy nor a mouse nor the combination of the that. two could arrange this no nope. situation um nope. <laughs> also i think at the end of the movie they confirm that the witches can teleport or at least teleport items which i think would have been really useful when they're trying to get rid of these two kids that ruin their an old diabetic woman that uh threaten their existence you know what i mean you could teleport or finger blast them finger blast or teleport or whatever um there's a thing we'll talk about it more in the next movie but the kid and it gets really dark at the end when the kid and the grandma are like hey we basically have the same amount of time left right like we're gonna we're both gonna die within the next 10 years what no that was the second movie the first movie the first movie talks about it a little bit too Oh, do they? Yeah. The second movie maybe, is much darker maybe, on that part. Maybe they got really close to it, and I just was like, oh, yeah, that's that's dark. Yeah, I don't think they explicitly said it because it was, like, much happier. He was like, I'm happy being a mouse, Grandma. I'm like, you don't have to worry. And she's like, oh, okay, well, I have diabetes, so, like. I think that's when I, when I was like, oh, yeah, they probably have about the same amount of time left. How long does a, yeah. a mouse kid live? And then the second movie really so gets into it. The second one really explains that. So the only other note that I had was um, all about Angelica Huston. She... So apparently Roald Dahl like had somebody in mind for Willy Wonka and like the studio was like, fuck you, Roald Dahl. We don't give a fuck what you think. We're going to change your book and we're not going to take your casting notes. So from that point on, he's like, I'm never going to get involved in casting. I'm not going to tell people what I want. But apparently Angelica Huston is who he pictured when he found out this was getting made. And my only other note that I just realized watching it is she does this weird thing when she's like explaining her plot and she's like watching Bruno turn into the rat. Is she puts her mask back on, mm -hmm. and in this, like, it's a full-on mask. Like, she is this grotesque creature, and it's covered by like a skin suit. Yeah. And she, as like Bruno's transforming, she's like gyrating, like she's getting like fucking off on this like <laughs> kid, <laughs> like getting turned into a mouse. It's a little weird. Yeah. But, uh, my only that's other all I've got for this one. My only other note about my only other note for this movie is um, that it was very anti-rat, which is sad, and very um, there's like a subtext of anti air quote spinsters i think it yeah i think the subtext of the movie and i don't know about Roald doll i don't know about his opinions on child rearing but it seemed like he or the filmmakers had a problem with women getting into their 30s and not having kids i mean he is english yeah and they're notoriously racist and yep. uh, sexist uh, and whatever one that's a little joke english fans no, but but, but I fucking I'm, hated. I'm serious about this though. I I really felt a subtext in this movie that was I, like I I didn't spinster. pick up on that, but now that you bring it up, I can I totally see that. Yeah, and bummed me yeah, out. Most bit. of these witches were not that old. They were like in their late 30s, like mid to late 30s. Most of them. Yeah, like oh, you know, fucking, in, you know, independent women with powers or strong independent women in their 30s that don't have kids. They must fucking hate kids, and they must be witches. Yeah, that's kind of how it came off to me. So the only other note that I had, and it was at the beginning, I fucking hated it, and I just would be remiss if I didn't mention it, is uh, the opening credits. It's like uh, the Evil Dead camera <laughs> going over these mountains in Norway. My note is just green in, font. Intro like spooky Superman. 
I fucking hated it because it was all shaky going over these mountains and it was like super fast. Like I kind of got a headache watching the opening to do with the movie. credits. And it felt like nothing to do with it at all. It's like that sped up, like fast motion, like fast forwarded um, effect that they used to do in movies. And yeah. it feels like the speed changes a lot too. Yeah, it's, it felt to me like a shittier version of, of Evil Dead. Yeah. Like the little Evil Dead camera. Um, and that was supposed to be in Norway because the hotel was in Norway and apparently the grandmother lived in Norway. And but the family lived in they were visiting she moved from norway to live in england so they're visiting her in england but she's from norway they, but the family the dad was english but they were living in america and like oh at the end of the movie they're gonna go like they're like oh, we should go to america and hunt vampires because they got like a little ledger witches. not vampires which is because we got a ledger <laughs> right. and the grandma's like yeah maybe we'll do that i have diabetes so like i probably shouldn't do that yeah it was they went a long way to explain all the different locations they were in where it's like yeah why don't you just shoot this in one place or whatever? Yeah. There's probably an easier way yeah. to get around this. Yeah. Like they, well, and that's what the American version did. I think they lived in America, but they were visiting the grandmother in Norway, but the kid was going to go to school in London, which is where he ends up uh, or where he's supposed to end up before they take this little vacation. But they take the vacation, which I think is in London as well. No, I think it was in Norway. No, I think the no, hotel Ro was in Norway. It's Rowan Atkinson. Like they, they're, they're in England. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. This is why it's confusing. And then at the end of the movie, he's going to go back to America or something. Yeah. None of it. None of it. But the grandma matters. doesn't want to go to America. Like when he's like, we need to go to America. And she's like, why would we go to America? We have like, $10 million oh, well, now. We don't have to do this shit. She's like, he's like, well, that's where I was going to go. And there's, we got this black book of witches in America. Like we yeah. could go turn all the witches into mice there too. And it's like, the grandma's, the grandma's like, like, dude, I'm old and have diabetes. I just want to fucking like knit and die. She's like, yo, we have $10 million now. Let's open a candy store here. I'll eat myself into a diabetic coma and we can fucking, you know, do the shit that witches wanted to do, but yeah, not with poison. For sure. All right. So let's get into. What have you been up to this week, bud? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did that at the beginning. I guess we could do news really, really quick. Um, yeah. Nothing really. The Craft <laughs> remake uh, dropped a trailer, but I could not get it to play, and I didn't care enough to, to go back and watch the trailer. I'm I'm kind of excited about it. I'll go watch it. I think I've said before I like um, the director. It's, it's out now. Oh, I'll probably watch it at some yeah. point. I like the director, yeah, so whose name I forgot. We could do that on the next episode. She's uh, The director's Fawn Moscato from uh, New Girl, right? Oh, I'm pretty cool. sure. Anyway. I, I think I watched the trailer and I was like, eh, okay. I was a little underwhelmed. Yeah, I, but I, I couldn't get underwhelmed. the trailer to work and I didn't go back to it. A um, bunch of things got delayed. Uh, Spider-Man 3 is apparently filming and so is Uncharted. And uh, that's it. That's all the news that I've got. Batman's filming again. Electro is going to be in Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, Spider-Man. But at this point, Spider-Man 3, it's already... We've already covered Spider-Man's reboot, so I don't think we'll be covering that again. But... Uh, there's, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think there's some other Spider-Man news. I it's None of it's been confirmed. So the yeah. only one that's borderline confirmed was Jamie Foxx tweeted that he was coming back as Electro and then took it down very quickly. And then apparently Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are reprising their roles, but Not confirmed. Sony reached out and said, none of this is confirmed, which is basically a way of saying, this is what we're trying to do, but they're not officially signed on yet. Yeah. Don't ruin the surprise, guys. Yeah. Because like I, from another source, I heard that uh, Andrew Garfield's pretty much confirmed, but Tobey Maguire's negotiating. He wants more time yeah. outside of the mask, so that way he can do some more acting. He doesn't want to be only in the movie as Spider-Man. Go make another movie. Like, you're well, in Spider-Man to be Spider-Man, bro. Yeah, so that's the thing that's funny is they, the, about... A little less than a year ago, they thought that there was going to be a new Spider-Man movie or comic book in the Sam Raimi ver uh, universe because they, they they were supposed to apparently start the countdown at five, but somebody on Marvel social media fucked up and started at four, and it had like a four in like the same font as the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, mm. and then it went to three, then two, then one, and everyone's like, "Holy shit! It's either going to be we're getting Sam Raimi Spider-Man four. And then everyone's like, yeah, but this came from Marvel Comics. Oh, they're like, oh, shit, we're going to get what was supposed to be Spider-Man 4 as a comic book. And then it ended up being J.J. Uh, Abrams and his son wrote a mini arc for Spider-Man that's like a standalone thing. Mm -hmm. And someone just fucked up and started it at 4 when they were supposed to start it at 5. And so people were fucking pissed. That's funny. Um, it's like totally off my radar. Uh, yeah. Um, I got one more piece of yeah, news. Yeah, let's – oh, go for it. Go, go, go. I'm really fucking excited about this, guys. Um, Zack Snyder's 
Justice League cut. He's bringing the Joker. He's bringing back. Jared Leto's Joker back. <laughs> I'm super excited. I guess that counts because we've already said we're going to. That's the cl- that's the truest definition of a remake. Literally remaking the exact same movie. Blow my fucking brains out, dude. <laughs> God, that's going to be a painful gonna be couple brutal. of weeks watching those. It, oh, man. It's going to be so bad. And oh, never mind. I'm just going to say a bunch of mean shit about people that are excited about the Justice League reboot. Yeah, that's not worth Jesus it. Jesus Christ. Let's let's move on to the 2021. You want to give a, a truncated elevator pitch? It's slightly different. Yeah. So this one um, takes place in the south in a fictional town, right, called Demopolis uh, in Alabama. And it takes place in like 1967. 19, it starts in 1968. Yeah. Um, and it's about uh, a black kid whose parents are killed in a car crash and he has to go live with his grandmother, um, just similar there. And he's having a hard time, uh, acclimating to the new, uh, he's grieving. Yeah. He's grieving exactly to his new life. He's grieving, but also he's like living at his grandmother's house and, uh, is scared to eat cornbread. Um, which, Hey buddy, cornbread's delicious. Eat that shit. Yeah. I mean, he grew up in Chicago. So I think they mentioned he grew up in Chicago and is now in the deep South, which is yeah, it's very, drastically different for a kid. Different. So um, his grandmother takes him on a little vacation to a really fancy hotel somewhere on the southern coast of uh, of this wonderful country. Um, and he runs afoul of some witches, very similar to the last one. He's sneaking around in the ballroom and ends up uh, hearing their whole plan and seeing them turn Bruno. Or he's not named Bruno in this one, right? You know, it's Bruno as well. Fat British kid into a rat. Um does he? I don't remember how long he gets away for. I actually didn't. So he doesn't get away really. Like he gets caught immediately. Like they like break the stage down. Um, because Anne Hathaway throws shit in this movie. Yeah, Anne Hathaway is like so. This witch has a lot more powers. But well, she like throws the stage. Yeah. He he like hides in the vent, and she figures out that he's in there, and so she like reaches in and pulls him out. Yeah. Yeah. So immediately right. So he gets, gets turned. Caught. He gets turned into a rat immediately, and then they escape through the vent. Um, and then him and the grandma and uh, his mouse, who is now, uh, there's another change from Kristen Chenoweth. Yeah, <laughs> she's uh, she can speak and she used to be a kid that a witch turned into a mouse. It's not just mice that he's training. Um, and Bruno all decide to uh, take down the, the witches. So they sneak in, they do the knitting needle thing, sneak into the, uh, the room and. It's pretty much the, the same from that point. Yeah. Is there anything else that's different? I mean, the end's different. I mean, at the, the end of the movie, he he is... So the the, the the two things that are drastically different are the bookends of the movie. Right. So the beginning of the movie is Chris Rock is narrating the movie, and he's like... He killed it, by the way. Really good voice. Which, the only issue that I had with it is that he's doing, like, this southern drawl of some kind. It, I can't tell you. Like, it doesn't sound like any particular accent that I've ever it's heard before. It's a little before. over the top, but it worked for me. But he does this really over the top draw and he's like, the first thing you need to know, witches are real. And then he gives the whole spiel on this, like, PowerPoint presentation. And... Yeah, Mike, do the he, do the impression of his voice. That's better than trying no, to put, a, put words to it. <laughs> yeah, so he, I, I really, I was just trying to like get the the energy level, not his actual voice or his his accent. Um, but he he has this like big energy, like first thing you got to know, witches are real and they hate <laughs> kids. And like, I'm not trying to do an accent. I'm not trying to be Chris Rock. I'm just trying to show like the level of energy and engagement he had in this. So he explains that witches are real. He get we get a little bit of the backstory that his he was in a car accident with his parents, but he survived because he wore his seatbelt, which I didn't realize seatbelts were really common in 1968. But okay, good on him for wearing the seatbelt. Um, yeah, good for him. So that's that's the first thing, and then we, we don't he, he encounters a witch before his grandma tells him about it, and so then we get all the shit about witches again. Like we get the origin of witches like twice in this one. So he exper- he meets a witch in like a convenience store yeah. and like tells his grandma and she's like, oh shit, I know about witches too and explains it. And this witch story is actually like a little bit more terrifying, but we'll get into it. And at the end of the movie, he's still a mouse and it's explained that it's like nine years later. And to your point, you mentioned in the previous movie that you thought that they had a conversation about they'll probably die around the same time. It's explicit in this one, but it also doesn't make sense. So like, He's trapped as a witch. The grandma tries to use trapped voodoo. Or, 
yeah, trapped as a mouse. The the grandma uses voodoo to try to like reverse engineer the spell and create a cure, and she's like, I can't do it. Tries <laughs> once, never tries again. Um, but she's like, hey, like I have some unexplainable cough that I just cough constantly whenever it's going to cause tension in the movie, but. Yeah. It's not whether or not I have cancer or anything like that. Like, they don't explain it. Oh, she just has coughing. a cough. Yeah. So she um, has a cough. And she's like, yeah, I'm probably going to die. And she, he goes, well, when am I going to die? Because I'm a mouse. She goes, well, mice normally live, like, three years or so. But, like, you're a human mouse. So, like, I would imagine you're going to live at least three times as long. So we'll Based on what, die really Grandma? Based, based on, on what? Nothing. <laughs> so then at the end of the movie, like, they once they save the day, he's, like, recruiting kids. It's, it's like the the losers club <laughs> he's a child soldier is what he is yeah but he's not a child soldier anymore because he's got like he's, he's a like child a mouse, mouse soldier with, like, but he's recruiting but child not soldiers. anymore at that point because he's like got like a like his he's got like a little mouse beard and he's got gray and his like mouse hair and he's now chris rock talking to kids and like uh, octavia spencer's looking a little older and a he's little like bit. recruiting yeah he's recruiting kids to like go and kill witches so he's like hey here's like a fuck ton of this potion yeah. like how are we what are you gonna do like we're gonna go fucking kill witches with this witch potion like he's like he conservatively has like 20 kids in this room that he's like create he's like coney 2012 <laughs> jesus christ um <laughs> yeah i had really mixed feelings about that i it rubbed me the wrong way the first time or when i first thought of it at the end of the movie when i was just experiencing all of this i was like oh, i don't really like the way this is ending i want him to be a kid and then i was kind of like well i think the theme, of, the theme of this movie is much more um, – the filmmakers seem to be more concerned with it. And the theme to me seems to be life changes and it's more about how you react to it rather than dwelling on what yeah. changed in your life. So it makes sense to me that he would stay a rat and he has to um, – a mouse and he has to learn how to enjoy his life on, given his circumstance with the hand that he's been dealt, right? Would you say that's basically yeah. the theme of the movie? Well, I mean, he says it pretty early on. She's yeah. like, he must be so afraid. And he's like, honest. She says, he was a, like, I feel a pretty bad timid for you, child. but I don't feel sorry for you. Yeah, and yeah. he goes, it's okay now that like, have he basically is like, dude, I just got fucking turned into a mouse by a fuck ton of witches. Like, nothing fucking matters. What am I going to be scared right. of now? Like, so, I know magic is real. So given that, I, I was kind of like, okay, well, that's actually in keeping with the, the moral of the movie. And it, you're right, stakes, I think you said earlier, that maintains the level of, of stakes in the movie. But then he's recruiting all the child soldiers. And I was like, this is kind of weird and dark. And it feels like maybe they're setting up a sequel or something. But I don't know if I love that it went to that place. No, I agree. I It's it's dark, but it like... And the grandma's like super into it, too. Yeah. Yeah, she's just like, yeah, fucking child soldiers coming so, 2012 so let me contradict myself again with my sort of overall feeling of this movie um or balance my point whatever you want to call it um i really i thought that this was like a pretty straight up horror film for 10 year olds i agree and yeah, i, and I, I really fair. fucking like that i don't think that they make movies like this anymore because the first one kind of was too um yeah. it's like a movie that is scary for children full stop that's actually the whole thought and yeah, I, I, think, I agree. And I think that's pretty cool. It doesn't. It doesn't. No, I agree. It's it doesn't exactly really pull any punches. No, not at all. This one isn't as. I don't think this one is as scary in terms of like the transformation. Like the transformations are pretty quick. Like it's like I you think, fart some. I think it's much green smoke and just, overall. You, I think the overall movie is because I think the witches are scarier. I think Anne Hathaway like, is much more menacing. And Anne Hathaway is really chewing the fat in this Dude, movie. She's like so, she's really. I feel like she chewing scenery. It feels like she felt the weight of Angelica Houston on her shoulders, and she was like, "I really need to step up to this role," and she did. Yeah, I think she did a good job. I wish she didn't do accents because I don't think her accents are that good. She was pregnant during uh, this movie, by the way. Oh, was she? Yeah. She Good her for second, her. She had her second kid in November. They wrapped filming in June. Somebody got uh -huh. stabbed in the neck on this movie. Yeah, I, mean, I wrote what that down too. So like a rigger and uh, like a lighting guy got an argument and stabbed. One of them got stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> fucking I insane. I hope he's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking insane, dude. Um, um, no, I think I, I thought Anne Hathaway <laughs> was fantastic. I really enjoyed her in this. I, I mean, say what you will about her accent. She's doing like a nonsense Transylvania accent. I enjoyed it. It was supposed to be German. Is what it was supposed I mean, to be. I think she knew she wasn't doing a German accent. She was doing a yeah. fucking uh, mustache twirling Eastern. Oh, European, yeah. She was really European. chewing the I thought she was fine. And like the witches in this, what I like about it is like the witches are much more obvious. Like um, they, 
they're not as grotesque as they are in the first movie. At least she definitely isn't. Like they have wide mouths and they open up kind of like Pennywise like a or Joker, Venom. a Joker smile. Yeah, and then it opens up like Venom yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> they they have like Chris Rock. Uh, like only two like talons for fingers, but it's like two talons. They're doing like metal like, fingers. Yeah, and, thumb. and then they had a. They still have like the chopped off feet kind of thing not in um, the only real difference is like for the most part they look like humans but they have less like wig rash and it's not yeah. because they're scar is just like the wigs drive them crazy because they have like sensitive skin um, but like other than that like they can totally fit in as women they have you said the square toes but anne hathaway is the one that has a single toe in the middle right with in the a middle. big uh claw, claw. On it. it's like a velociraptor dude at the, at the, when, I, when they first showed that i was like oh she's gonna do the claw tap like a velociraptor at some point and then she fucking does it later and i was like yeah yeah, what what I liked about that's what her, I would have done. And what's funny is now that we're talking about this, I'm actually liking this one more. Yeah, because I actually liked it less because I liked the I liked the the puppets. I did, I thought the CG did the, this movie a disservice. Yeah, it wasn't good CG. It's not bad, but it's not good. It should have been like better. it's. I think it's better than Sonic, but it's not. It's just fine, good. but it's noticeably yeah. CG and when you're comparing it to Jim Henson doing practical effects, it's like, Oh, it's not as good. It's just not. Yeah. It, it's you're, you're not going to live up to that. Yeah. I really wish they did like what they did with, uh, um, the dark crystal series mm -hmm. and just found a way to do puppets again. Like that would have been great. I would have loved that. Yeah. But, but you know, this movie, I think it works because the rest of this movie feels a little bit more polished and stuff, just the cinematography. I so I think doing the CG like kind of made sense or worked a little bit better. Um, I think this was a waste of Stan, Stanley Tucci's talents. I, I mean, he was having fun. I enjoyed him in this. I just, I, I, I was like, man, I want him to be doing more. Like he wasn't sure. in it as much as Mr. Bean was Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> um, I don't disagree with that, but I enjoyed him in this movie. I'm glad he's in it. I, I like him a lot. Anytime I see him in something, I'm like, oh great. He's in this. Yeah. Um, but my, I felt like between this and Transformers, I'm like, what are you doing, bud? My dude knows how to pay the bills. Hunger Games Transformers <laughs> in this, like, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be on Broadway. Oh, that's right, he was whenever. in Hunger Games too. Yeah. yeah, he. I mean, he obviously he's like is a fantastic actor, and I, I don't know what he's up to outside of these huge movies, but I'm sure he's doing whatever he wants. But he's like, yeah, I'm gonna he's, do these. Big he's movies. doing really well. Like, he's consistently working. Pay people bills. know who he is, but he's not. I, I also don't think he's one of those people that's getting like stalked like crazy. Um, I would like to see him in, you know, an uh, an Oscary movie. That'd be nice. Yeah. Let, yeah. I let him so. flex a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So what I liked about this movie, it was one of our but, critiques. Oh, go ahead, bud. Um, I was just, I was going to say this earlier on. I wanted to give it a sort of an overview of our conversation. I didn't take notes during this movie because I enjoyed it so much. I just stopped writing oh, things down. Good. Yeah. I wrote down two things. I like that they, I like the, um, the way they explained that he survived the car crash. Um, it's like a, it's a shot where he's sitting in a car and he's right side up, but you notice that on the outside of the car, the uh, snow is falling up instead of down. Right. And then the camera rotates and it lands upside down or right side up right when he drops that he, his parents weren't wearing safety belts. Yeah. And you can see like the mom's legs or something. They're upside down. Yeah. And, and well, then the cop, then the cop, right, leans the cop down. Drags him out. And I yeah. thought that was really fucking effective. And just like at the beginning of the movie to like set up um, what this kid's story was and you know why we should care about him super effective i really like that very um artistic and efficient i thought the kid was great the, yeah, the was, hero kid yeah especially after luke was such a sh i mean i don't want to hate and him because he's a 10 year old i kid, think but that's he was what was disjointing or jarring for me with chris rock is like they both gave good performances you know now obviously chris rock was just the bookends as the narrator mm -hmm. but like the chris rock had an accent that the kid did not have and of course you can develop an accent over time but generally like it, it just seemed odd that it, it didn't sound like this kid would grow up to be Chris Rock. That didn't bother but, me, but I hear you. My only other, um, the only other note that I managed to write down was that the music, at least in the beginning, was awesome. They had like three or four needle drops um, within the first like twenty minutes, which normally would be too many, but it was just all these like fantastic, um, you know, pop and soul Motown. Yeah, Motown. Thank you uh, from around the time. And they're just so good, and they fit in with uh, that those moments in the movie really well. And I was just like, "Yeah, this soundtrack." Rules. Octav Octavia Spencer is always great, though. Like, I think if you had a lesser actress as the grandmother, I don't think this would have been good. But Octavia Spencer, I yeah. think, really grounded 
the scenes that she was in. She was fantastic. Did you notice that she had like a thousand yard stare when she was working with the uh, green screen stuff? No, I didn't. That was my only like uh, negative comment about her performance is that I felt like I could tell when she was interacting. She d- with she couldn't figure out where her eye lines were supposed to be. I I don't know if it was the eye line or something. She yeah, she just looked like she wasn't there. Got it. I didn't notice it, but. I probably will never watch this again, so I probably will never notice it. <laughs> Can we have a movie with Octavia Spencer doing something where she's like not an inspiring old black lady in the 60s? Yeah, she was in Spider-Man, the the very first Spider-Man. She was the one who was checking in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man to the Well, she the did the fight. help in Hidden Figures and it's like the same, very similar character in all of these. Yeah. You know, but it's unfortunate because there aren't that many roles for one obviously women of color generally but women of color in her age group who unfortunately like she's a fantastic actor but she's not your your uh hollywood definition of beauty so unfortunately like she's always going to be that support style character yeah um that's unfortunate i think think she's fucking incredible yeah she should no i agree she could uh you know co-headline just a drama about two people in love during a war or something. I think so. Or, yeah. you know, a current current movie, not a period piece. Yeah, no, I think she's great. The only, I, I just wanted to bring up uh, Anne Hathaway is the witch because you brought up that um, it was kind of weird that the Angelica Huston version, the witches didn't use any other powers to defeat the children. But in this one, uh, Anne Hathaway did. Like, there's the point when he, like, gets into the, the vent. She, like, rips the vent. She has superhuman strength. Like, she's throws a podium she throws an entire stage i love that fly. that was that was fucking menacing when she, yeah, the first time so she, she did like, it i was like oh fuck she's a oh, superhuman shit. she's got some yeah. powers and yeah, then she's she, like really angry she, and she puts on a batman into, voice when she's angry too which i like yeah but she like reaches into the the event and her arms start stretching and like it's like bending the the vent and the only reason well, her, they escape is the vent breaks and then her hands like right as she goes to snatch and her hands get cut up by like the fan inside the ventilation system and her it, that this was is pretty like, cool this is like a straight up pennywise moment her arms aren't just extending through the vent they're like breaking as they extend somehow it's yeah like, it sounds like they're being broken as they get longer it's, and it's, it's almost really like she unsettling. just keeps adding joints like yeah she just adds another forearm and then adds another forearm adds another forearm but you hear it growing and creaking and when at the she, same time and when she bleeds because she gets her hands cut she bleeds like black crystals yeah it's weird fucking cool well, the, man the other thing that i think god now that we're talking about this i like it a lot more yeah. than i did while watching it this i didn't movie, really like it while watching rules. it if i had a 10 year old funny i would 100 percent show him I this and then they'd have not enjoy this while watching it but now that i'm talking about it and comparing it i'm actually liking it a little bit more because the other thing i was going to say is Throughout the original one, Angelica Huston is always like laissez-faire, just not really giving a shit. She's just like, oh, I'm going to go on with my day, even though I know these rats are out there. But Anne Hathaway was kind of, that was always in the back of her mind, like, they're out there. We need to be on the lookout. Um, And she wasn't just like, I'm going to let everything go. Well, uh, to that point, and we, you know, just to wrap up a thing that we said earlier or connect a thing we said earlier, um, this movie flows like it's telling a story and one thing happens another after another in a very like um logical way and i don't mean that in a cold way just that like things are connected and they all it feels like it's one part of there it feels like as many parts of the same tale yeah you Whereas go to the a other to one Z, is just like, but you hit every letter you're yeah, not just the first movie felt like you went to a, a and then you skip to d then it skipped to j then it skipped to q and then it skipped to z where this one is just like a b c d yeah. e f g or like here across you know here's part a in english but then here's part b and that's in acrylic and then part c is in sanskrit sure <laughs> that makes sense right i don't get it but it makes sense to you and i'm for it fuck you um no this this <laughs> This movie, uh, it's pace and flow, and it made a lot more sense, and it I, kept me engaged, and it, um, it keeps you, it makes you uh, invest in the characters, in a way that stacks and pays off towards the end. The only thing that really didn't make sense to me, like it makes sense because I explain it that the Kristen Chenoweth mouse is um, Mary was turned before, but it's like she heard. Octavia Spencer and the hero. They talk about uh, it. Uh, talking about witches. No, so no, at no. this point, she recognizes that she they, she must have heard them talking about it at some point during the road trip when they got home from the convenience store and were they talking talk about, about this, the witches. They talk about it in the movie. Mar- like when uh, Mary first starts talking, um, I think the Octavia Spencer and or hero boy are both like, 
hey, why didn't you talk earlier? And she's like, listen, it's tough for a rat. Like, I, I got to be sure, man. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's a little bit of a cop out just so we can get that. I, I don't really know what she added to the story. Honestly, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't know if the math works out, but I think that she was charming enough that it didn't matter. Yeah, and I frankly, just don't think it added it was, anything. It was nice to have another but, kid and it was nice to have um, another female voice. That's fair. But you got now. Originally, I was going to say. Now that we're wrapping it up, I was going to say I didn't feel like this was a necessary remake. I I felt like it lost the charm of the original, but I think it's really just the puppets that I'm latching onto on the original one. But not like which structurally, like not we can throw away the twenty plus or thirty years of filmmaking, you know, thing. Throw that stuff away because that's not necessarily a fair thing to hold against an original movie. But now that we talk about it, the structure, the flow of the film, and a little bit more of a menacing villain maybe this is worth it i don't know i think i I, I think i think it's totally worth it and i'll give you three reasons um oh shit (laughs) i think kids movies make more sense to be remade because kids are more impacted by like they're they're more sensitive to the way contemporary movies or our stories are told the way movies look and stuff so i think there's always going to be room to say, here's another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie because these look like goofballs in pu- in puppets or in costumes, in rubber costumes to you. So, yeah, let's make another yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. That's um, totally fair. Yeah. That makes sense because as think, a kid, I didn't like black and white movies. I didn't like old movies. Yeah, that's um, fine. Like, but now you're this never gonna... podcast has made me go back and watch them, and I appreciate old movies now. But as a kid and a teenager, I didn't want to watch like any old movies. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that changing the setting and... Um, casting primarily people of color in the lead roles it's fantastic yeah puts, puts like people that. on you know puts uh, people on screen that people in the audience might not have been able to see you know what i'm trying to say i'm not explaining no i get what, i get exactly inclusion's good yeah um <laughs> exactly um and i think that the original one is fun but I think it was flawed when it came out. I don't think it was a fantastic movie. It, no, no, I agree nothing about that. the original movie says to me that it's a perfect film that can't be touched. So I think, no, I think, that's I think it's one of those movies that can be updated in an interesting way um, that improves upon the original. And I think that's fair when we look at things like a lot of people were pissed when they remade The Lion King. Now, granted, I think animation is a little bit different. I think you can take The Lion King, for example, and show a contemporary sure. child that movie and they'll enjoy it. But it's not going to be something they're going to naturally go and find out. So I do think it's fair to say, well, here was a fantastic movie. Let's make it again for the next generation Yeah, and everything. And I think that makes sense. Like, I enjoyed Aladdin. I enjoyed The Lion King. I actually enjoyed the live action versions of those as well. But I also recognize that those aren't necessarily made for me. They were made for the new generation. Yeah, and that's all, that also feels like a thing where it's it's such a legendary movie. It's such a classic, iconic movie that the new one feels like it's even if it's um, note for note, like scene for scene or remake, even if it's um, it's interesting to see new actors in, inhibit these old characters. Yeah, like a lot of people get pissed about movies being remade, which obviously that's the whole point of this podcast. But it's just like nobody bats an eye when you look at even like Hamilton, like Hamilton, you know, um, Lin-Manuel Miranda left the role yeah. and somebody else took over like and it's still a fucking amazing musical. You look at Hamlet. Hamlet is still considered one of those roles, especially for like British actors who want to be seen as serious actors. Like every major British actor does some Shakespeare movie or does Shakespeare on Broadway or the equivalent of Broadway. Like the and Globe. If you're Kenneth Branagh, you do a ton. Yeah, and it's like we don't bat an eye when when we see another version of Romeo and Juliet. We don't bat our eye when we see another version of Hamlet, but yeah. you know, God God forbid we get a second Lion King movie. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's a lot of nuance in this conversation. Like doing even yeah. though it worked out in my opinion, doing Spider-Man 4 years later with another actor is ridiculous. And that's like I agree. that's some superhero fatigue shit. And that that was just licensing. They didn't want to lose the rights yeah, to the yeah, movie. Yeah, right. And which then there's I get, yeah. And there's other stuff that's like and the witches comes close to this, but there's stuff that uh, maybe you can think of an example because I can't think of it while I'm talking about it. But there's original movies that are so of their time. Oh, Clerks doesn't need to be remade. Classic no. movie, um, you know, great in so many ways. 
iconic in so many ways, but also like that's a movie that is of its time. Yeah. And those characters are those characters and nobody else is going to do them because they're not because yeah. there's the height like, of acting. Cool Runnings, for example. Fantastic movie. <laughs> I would never watch a Cool Runnings <laughs> remake. Yeah. Hey, are we still doing a Jane and Silent Bob reboot? We can get that to it eventually. Should we just do the craft next time and then maybe go to Jay and Silent I really don't want to do Jay and Silent Bob <laughs> reboot because I hate Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Love Kevin Smith. Hate oh, Jay man. and Silent Bob. I, they're not, standalone movies. I like Jay and Silent not Bob gonna, when they're in other movies. I'm but, not going to defend Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I'm not going to die on this hill. But I've seen reboot. That's one of my favorite phrases. And if I make I my own podcast, that's going to be the name of it. Um, <laughs> where I just talk about shit that doesn't matter. No, uh, if you don't like Strike Back, you're not going to like reboot because it's not I as guarantee good. I won't like it. But there's there's one moment in Reboot that I think is one of the best things that Kevin Smith has done ever, huh. or at least in a long time. And it almost makes the movie worth watching. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it. Kevin Smith lives <laughs> down the street from me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Come do an episode of our podcast, buddy. We'd love to have you on. Yeah. Come on, Fat Man. That's oh. the name of his podcast. Like, he goes by Fat Man for his podcast. He had... Uh, he looks fantastic. Heart I'm so glad survived, that he's taking care of himself. And I'm glad that he's still around. He looks great now. Did I tell you I ran I'm into him at Veggie Girl? Himself. No, you didn't. I ran into him at Veggie Girl a year and a half ago or two years ago. And um, I just I had to say something. I was like, hey, man, I'm glad you're still around. Fist bumped him. It was very nice. He was very cordial. And, I doubt uh, Jay. Oh, sorry. You're I'm not done. I was just going to say I'm glad that he's vegan now and he's an outspoken member of our community. I'm happy to have he him. He is, yeah. I've, I've noticed that. Um, I doubt he remembers me now, but Jay used to um, shop at a store that I worked with all the time. Like He would come in every week and he would always come by over by my department because he was really into the product we sell. I, I try not to talk about what I do professionally or what I did, um, but he, he would come by and he, he knew me because I would talk to him every time he came in. Uh, I doubt if I saw him today, he would remember me, but uh, Jay was a super cool dude. Super cool. So I've heard he's a sweetheart. Yeah, Jason Mewes. Um, See, so, and I don't know why I'm trying to sell you on this movie. Jason Mewes does the best acting of his career in Reboot, by the way. Oh, so, interesting. I'm not saying it makes, a, it makes it a great movie, but Jason's really fun in this movie. Yeah, huh. maybe we'll get to it. Uh, the only other thing I really want to say about what we just covered, um, I'm, one, I'm thinking that it going on streaming... Like, obviously, they're not going to make any... I, I'm torn because I don't think this movie would have made a ton of money in the box office. I, um, uh, I think it would have done okay. I think it's a little bit of a sleeper. I don't think there's a whole lot yeah. to get kids in the theater. No, I don't think so either. Because, like, Anne Hathaway, Stanley Tucci, Octavia Spencer isn't anybody who's going to get in. We were talking... Just to jump back really quick, we were talking about remaking like, The Lion King. I think it totally makes sense to cast childish gambino and beyonce in those roles and see what they do with them and also that's going to get kids in the theater um, yeah absolutely. I, don't, I don't think that Anne hathaway is getting kids in the theater no i don't think so either like i just don't know like we didn't even see a trailer for this before they decided they're going to put it on hbo max so i'm curious as to how they would have marketed this because clearly like this isn't going to make any money and i don't know if this is even a movie that's going to go have somebody go oh the witches i'm going to go sign up for hbo max for this as well so I'm really curious as to how this does because streaming services generally don't give out information on how well the movies are doing. Right. Well, the whole point of Netflix doing original shows, of a streaming service doing original shows, Netflix was doing it first, um, is to get people to sign up for your service because you're the only one that has the new fucking David Fincher series or whatever, right. Kevin, Kevin Spacey. I'm trying to think of like actual examples. Um, but you're right. This like isn't a movie that's going to make people sign up for HBO Max, and they were going to release it in theaters, so they were probably looking to make two hundred million dollars on this movie. And this was Robert Zemeckis as well, which he hasn't had a hit not a, in a long time. Yeah, this isn't a cheap movie. No, it's not. And you had Guillermo del Toro and Alfonso Cuarón as the executive producers. Oh, is uh, Cuarón like one of the executives? Yeah, he cool. he was at one point he was going to direct it. At one point Guillermo del Toro was going to direct it, and Guillermo del Toro wanted to do it as a stop motion, but um, they said no, if so this, he he passed it on. Yeah, I mean, if this movie came out in the theaters, I don't think it would be considered a success unless it made four hundred million dollars. Um, yeah, it would have to conservatively, because so, I'm sure this. I, I don't know. I bet this probably costs because the CG isn't fantastic and hathaway's great none of the other actors in there are ones who are getting 15 to 20 million dollar salaries right. i imagine this movie costs somewhere between 60 and 80 million but by the time you would have marketed it yeah i think you're right they would have had to 
I think it would have been fine at like 200 million because you look at Into the Spider Verse was considered very financially viable. Like it was considered a smash, and it only did like 250 million dollars. Well, yeah. I mean, if it cost if it cost 80 million, they and... probably would have spent about that on marketing. I, I think a 200 200 million would have been. But if it breaks even, it's considered a man. flop. You know what You're I'm right. saying? So I think it needs yeah. to. I think they they were probably expecting four. Another question I have is, I guess it's a Warner Brothers movie, right? So yeah, HBO would have already had the rights to it. So HBO is not even buying it from Warner Brothers. No. So it didn't cost them anything to license it. So they're just not going to well, recoup anything. But also, Warner Brothers didn't make any money from selling it, quote unquote. No. So like, like it's it's they kind of just ate it. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they just ate it. I think you're right. I don't know where they're making yeah. money. That's interesting. I think it's just something that they'll be able to throw up on a sizzle reel for that, advertising purposes. That feels just, like a lot of what's going to happen with streaming. You know? There's still talks as to rumors that we're going to get Black Widow before the end of the year. And Marvel's that, saying we're not going to get it, but... I think it's going to be I, streaming. I don't know. I it's It's one of those things, like... And a lot of people, like, they've been doing... Like a lot of different podcasters, um, like big podcasters, small podcasters. Um, Disney's done some research market. And apparently a lot of people, even before they dropped Mulan, were like, we'll spend $30 on Black Widow. We're not going to spend $30 on Mulan, um, even though we spent it for the podcast. But yeah, if it wasn't for the podcast, I wouldn't have spent the money on Mulan. I think if you're a family, you'll, you're spending the money. For a family, it makes sense. For just Katrina and I, for two people, when yeah. we have A-list, you know, for us, it seems a little odd. I did it for the podcast, but um, yeah, I think that's that's it. I, I'm just curious. That's just food for thought. Like what this movie would have done if it we weren't in a pandemic. Yeah. I, I do think Black Widow is going to come to streaming, by the way. Disney just had yeah, a thing where so. they said our focus is on streaming. Now. It's streaming. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's smart. I don't, you know. We don't have to get into this, but we had our, our wager this summer when we we're going to get back to theaters. And I told you correctly, I might add, there's yeah, no way we're going won. to theaters this summer. It's not happening. And well, I mean, it technically did happen. It did uh, open up. I saw it. Not I've in the way twice. Not in the way that we were talking about. We figured that there would be enough theaters open that you could go see it easily. I did have to drive an hour and a half to go see it, but it I was think, still I don't think a that, month and a half outside of what we said it was going to be. So I, I, I lost the bet no matter what. Listen, I don't think that theaters are going to open up in a meaningful way, anything close no, to normal, so. until maybe next summer. So yeah, I I'm thinking May. I don't see uh, Black Widow coming out on uh, in theaters. It's also no, just so it's you know no offense to Scarlett Johansson, it's not a big enough Marvel movie. It's not the Eternals. It's not Doctor Strange. It's not Captain America. Yeah, that feels like the one that they would send to streaming if they had to choose. You know. Yeah. Well, especially since it's going to apparently hold up uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon. Yeah, and then there's a timing thing too, right? Like those streaming shows have to come out at some point too. I mean, the movies have to come out, but they're all interlocked. They're interconnected. So right. if one relies on the other, the other can't come out until the yeah. other one does. Apparent, I'm thinking the young Black Widow, like the sister, is going to replace her and is going to be in in that movie. So they need to, or in that series. So I think I'm so they have to release it first. Yeah, I want to talk to you. I mean, there's nothing to talk about at this point, but I'd like to have a conversation with you at some point when we get some more information about what the future of the MCU looks like. So maybe whenever Marvel does an info drop or like if we know it's coming, yeah. then we can speculate about it. But I want to talk about Young Avengers, all the new characters, where yeah, Spider-Man is going to end up. Like, I'm really excited for Phase 4, man. Yeah, me too. Whenever it, whenever all right, well, let's wrap it up. We we I, I teed up your plugs earlier by talking about your shirt that I'm wearing, but uh, give, give us your plugs, bro. Yeah, I'm on uh, the Instagrams at dyslexic, D-Y-S, Alex, I-C, and you can see the uh, t-shirts that I'm making up on there. I've got a Halloween-themed one that says Final Girl in the Halloween movie font, which I think is really fun. Um, I'm on the Twitters at my last name, uh, P-U-L-I-S-C-I, and if you want to follow along with what I've been watching, I'm on Letterboxd at Polishi as well. Excellent. You guys can check out everything that's MDX Pods related at mdxpods.com, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at MDX Pods. If you want to support the show, um, very soon, we've only got three more movies of our Fast franchise um, wrap up. But after we get through the Fast franchise, we are committed to doing um, some bonus episodes, and those will be on Patreon only to give you guys a reason to want to support us on Patreon. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's going to be coming up soon. We are going to figure out something where we're going to continue doing weekly episodes that are smaller because um, we want to make sure you guys have all the content that you could possibly have during a quarantine. But uh, thanks for listening and check out Alex's stuff. Check out his shirts. Get it before. Oh, it's probably probably can't get it before Halloween at this point, but 
Yeah. No, no, by the it's, time this comes still, out, no. Yeah. It, yeah, no, because this will drop on a Friday. Um, if you listen on Patreon. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. thanks for listening. And uh, happy Halloween. <laughs>